What is up everyone it's Saber here and welcome to another Naruto What If. If you end up liking the video please consider subscribing, it's free and you can take it back at any time and it really helps me out and this is my second channel so if you want some more what ifs go check out my other channels. And with all of the YouTube formalities out of the way let's get into it. The valley of the end he was tired he had used up all his chakra getting past the sound for and keeping up with the abilities of the Sharingan and now we find Naruto exhausted and being held up by Sasuke the latter ready to plunge an electricity covered arm through his heart a last ditch effort the blonde diverted the elemental blade from his heart to his right lung it would still be a death blow to any normal being but our blonde hero was anything but normal the pain was all he could feel not. The crimson liquid being poured from his punctured lung or the blood rapidly filling his mouth but this pain brought back memories of his raising and training with Jiraiya memory Naruto sat concentrating on the small blue orb slowly growing in his charred palm but alas it wasn't meant to be his chakra sufficiently drained from him with performing the technique so many times he had no more to give so with a sigh he grabbed a fallen leaf and spun it between his dexterous digits slumped against a tree and closed his eyes going over the steps in his head he was so focused on getting more chakra to continue to train oblivious to the now shriveled and bone dry leaf he absorbed chakra from the small leaf he was twirling between his fingers with the small amount of nature chakra he had absorbed he felt the minute increase in his reserves like a raindrop upon a puddle he felt the ripple and opened his eyes to see the dead leaf many people had called him obtuse or oblivious to his surroundings or the world but his mind had been kept sharp from a young age to avoid any and all unwanted encounters with the civilians and most ninja of Kanoa but those were far from his thoughts and he looked at the once bright green leaf turned dead brown he gave the leaf a once over and dropped it to pick up another leaf laying near him so he began experimenting with the new found idea it was the direct opposite of the Raisingan instead of forcing out chakra in a swirling pattern he drew his chakra away from his palm in a circular pattern and he gained the same results from the last leaf it crumpled between his fingers once again he felt the drop of chakra from the leaf in his exhausted reserves it grin spread across his face training would go so much faster as he didn't have to stop to wait for his chakra to replenish all around you could see large brown circles all over the once green clearing he once tried draining chakra from a tree but he immediately felt it overwhelming him and forced him to vomit up the foreign essence from his body with much coughing following after forcibly ejecting the chakra from his body as the bet against Tsunade waged on he practiced with his absorption powers after each session to perfect the Raisingan he found that not only could he take chakra from the plant life around him but animals and other people as well he experimented with it whenever he was near large crowds and he could touch a person's hand or sleeved arm unnoticed he found not only would he steel chakra but he found he would have memories and abilities that weren't as each new person or animal he siphoned off of he would feel their emotions and gain traits when he first noticed the changes in his physical form he couldn't control them and the more powerful the being he siphoned the more difficult it was to force the traits absorbed to receive memory and naruto had never tested his power on another shinobi but this time was as good as any so with a shaken intake of air he grabbed a firm hold of Sasuke's arm implanted in his chest and began to drain all the chakra he could Sasuke you are the first to see my new ability in action were Naruto's words to his newest enemy what are you talking about dead last what tech was all he said before he could feel all his chakra begin leave him he tore his arm from the blonde's grip and fell to one knee the fist sized hole in Naruto's chest closed up with the intake of fresh chakra to work with his once blonde hair now at thick black streaks and had grown out to similar length to Sasuke's blue eyes turned purple with the famous three tomo design of the Sharingan even the curse seal had been absorbed memories of techniques the Uchiha massacre from Sasuke's perspective everything that was Sasuke was now firmly copied into Naruto's mind and body the rush of chakra re-energized the blonde slash black haired teen he grinned and kicked Sasuke into the cliff and rendered him into the blissful darkness Sasuke you are coming back to Kanoha to face judgment of desertion and treason so Naruto tied Sasuke's limbs together and prepared to make the long trek back to his village by the time Naruto had arrived at the village he had successfully suppressed Sasuke's personality and physical traits so he was back to his blonde self and currently very proud of himself for completing his second air rank mission but as soon as he had stepped through the gate Sasuke was plucked from his grasp and Tsunade herself gave the blonde boy a solid chopped to the back of the neck the only words Naruto could GT out before he succumbed to the blackness was why Naruto woke up to fuzzy voices like a radio with terrible reception and supremely light sensitive eyes soon enough everything came into focus and he was simply sitting in a chair in the center of the Kanoa council hall and much yelling was going on around him straight out execution is far too merciful to this stupid little shit he almost ended the Uchiha line the little fucker needs to 
die a slow agonizing death why waste time trying to torture the bastard when he can spend all of eternity burning in the pits of the deepest hell no need to delay him to his long overdue death those were excerpts sample to the two sides of the ideas going on and neither boded well for the blonde hero everyone quieted down when the doors swung open to reveal a stone-faced Tsunade and Jiraiya they both took their respective seats and everyone faced Naruto seated in the middle Tsunade stood and Read off the only thing on the agenda for the meeting the execution of Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto will now be decided Naruto's eyes bugged out of his head at hearing both his name combined with the Andames, and that he was facing execution what had he done so he voiced his concerns Bachan what the hell is going on I haven't done anything in record time Tsunade's face went from emotionless to cold fury etched across her face, and she hissed out you will hold your tongue address me in such a manner again and I will shatter your jaw Naruto winced at the anger in her voice but what is this all about he still couldn't figure out what was going on fine Okage-sama what is this all about the blonde can control himself when he needs to and a threat of a shattered jaw is a good reason for some self-control most of the anger had left the features of the Godame and returned back to emotionless you have been deemed expendable and you are to be trialed and executed for the crimes of your Bijou our blonde hero's jaw dropped to the ground, but Bachan, I'm not the QB ask my friends I haven't done anything wrong the council erupted into laughter when Tsunade spoke up between the throes of laughter I haven't laughed that hard in years so I will forgive your insult, but I would never be the grandmother to a demon such as yourself and you have no friends it was all a lie to secure your undying loyalty to Kanoa, but your uselessness has come to an end your execution will correlate. With the return of the Andame as he retakes the mantle of Hokage actually I will let him explain with those words a bright yellow flash revealed Minato the Yandame standing next to his wife Kushina and children Taiki who looked identical to Naruto except for the QB Jinchuriki markers on his cheeks and a slightly younger girl named Ri she had shoulder length hair red like her mother and a soft featured face many whispers and hushed gasps floated amongst the room as people stared upon a supposedly long dead figure and his family greetings honorable counsel it is true I am Minato Namikaze the Yande Mokage I had faked my death along with my wife and son to move into exile as to not trigger the legendary rage of Kyuubi with the Kyuubi mollified for a few years it enabled the Jinchuriki seal to link my former son and Bijou and only when they were finally fully combined could I return to finally slay the Bijou once and for all with all the pieces finally coming into places name being read as Namikaze and the Yandame himself saying he was his former son Naruto surged from his seat with a scream intent on causing some sort of bodily harm to repay his father for leaving him stuck with QB but he didn't get more than two steps before green light shot from the Shodame's necklace and bound his arms legs and head from moving Minato chuckled and seeing Naruto lying on the floor struggling against the chakra bonds I am glad that necklace, even after all this time still keeps demon chakra. Contained your execution will be long and arduous I will personally see to it I have waited 15 years in exile waiting for the time where I can return to my people and tomorrow I shall enjoy finally ridding the world of QB once and for all and with that he walked up to Naruto as he had maneuvered into a kneeling position Minato knelt to be eye level with Naruto and said enjoy your last hours on earth QB and if my son is able to hear me I would like to humbly thank you and apologize for what I will do but what the hell my first son died when I started the fusion with the demon Minato stood straight and grabbed the back of Naruto's head and brought the younger blonde's face to his quickly moving knee and a resounding crack from the sudden breaking of a nose and then the grinding noise as he ground his knee into the shattered bone and cartilage blood quickly escaped from the broken skin and poured down Naruto's face he didn't make a sound through the entire ordeal resolved to not let them see the pain he felt on the inside the powerful blow had caused his brain to bruise and swell forcing him into unconsciousness the next day in Kanoa the streets were flooded with people an announcement called for attendance of the village inhabitants in the open marketplace everyone was waiting for what the Hokage had gathered them for soon enough an ANBU walked into the square and with a quick cry of Mokutan a large stage and gallows was erected and the Hokage marched to the Stage gazing over the crowd Tsunade picked up each face and smiled once she saw the entire populace showed up bar the ninja on missions and villagers out on business she addressed the gathered people of Kanoa today I stand before you as your Okage but without you all there would be no Kanoa together we are unstoppable 15 years ago QB attacked our home and we would not yield we brought the demon to its knees today we see the final step in the death of QB and raise ourselves.
above all others superior to all during her speech there were chants of praise and loyalty k-o-n-o-h-a the crowd screamed getting worked into a frenzy each ninja that fell to the beast will never die they are not dead they live in u.s they live in kanoha roars of cheers so deafening thinking was made all but impossible with the intrusion of the cheering bring out the demon sonate demanded naruto was bound hands behind his back and the shodame's necklace secured tightly to his neck to prevent any resistance he was pelted with food trash rocks anything that the crowd could get a hold of he made it to the stage and was knelt on the edge before the crowd naruto watched the crowd as everybody he knew scream chants of kanoha and murderer were some of the loudest tsunade stepped next to naruto brought the crowd to a dull roar as she continued her speech people of kanoha here is the qb fused with a human into death today we shall carve out revenge for each man and woman torn from us today we finally send it into the depths of the abyss to suffer in an eternity of pain the ANBU lead Naruto over to the rope hanging from the gallows and secured it around his neck fairly tight with a signal the rope was pulled from the other end and Naruto was yanked into the air and lowered back a standing position and was jerked back into the air and held for half a minute seconds from passing out they lowered him and undid the noose Naruto was then dragged to a table near the edge for the crowd. To get a good view his hands were freed and retied above his head the lack of oxygen and disorientation proved to weaken him so he put up little effort next a kunai was heated blazing red and agonizingly slowly cut through the skin of his abdomen cauterizing each blood carrying vessel to prevent bleeding out during this process the amassed crowd was deathly silent wanting to hear the pleas from the demon for it to beg for life only to be denied alas they would wait an eternity not a sound escaped the lips of Naruto except the sparse groan when the kunai hit a nerve cluster after the cutting of his abdomen was complete the executioners slowly removed each organ and loose flesh from the open body cavity the same red hot kunai was used to prolong his pain and stave of the loss of blood as each organ was cut out finally once his stomach area was emptied they sprinkled a mixture of salt and sulfur to draw out the screams they craved for again not a sound only blood passed his drenched red lips infuriated Tsunade stepped forth to introduce the final player in this sick display of savagery I bring forth the long thought dead the defeater of QB himself the Yandame and a bright yellow flash erupted next to her and none other than the Yandame stood with his arms to the sky and the crowd immediately grew to cheers and praise to the once thought fallen Hokage Minato stepped next to the bloody table and the masses quieted as he spoke the QB so long ago stomped upon our noble people and watch the life leave their eyes and now I shall watch the life leave its eyes with that the ANBU picked up the almost comatose Naruto and knelt him at the feet of the Namakes Minato brought one of his famous tri-pronged kunai from his hip pouch and set it to the throat of Naruto a quick slash and a torrent of rich crimson liquid sprayed out of the wound Naruto quickly toppled onto his back gasping for air that couldn't pass the blood with his last few moments of Life our bloodied blonde watched the glee in Minato's eyes grow as said man stomped on his chest forcing even more of the life liquid to spray onto the stage soon the streams of blood slowed and lessened in strength before nothing came from the slice except drops and with the stopping of the flow of blood so did the life of one Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto vessel and tied spirit of the QB no Yoko time skip it was a day of celebration. In Kanoha the QB is dead Yandame is back and better than ever. Life was good for the people the corpse of Naruto was carried from the stage and burned unceremoniously his name stricken from the records of every book and file in Kanoha no one would remember the name Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto or who he was to the village he no longer existed but that was far from the truth somewhere in between the realm of living and dead our blonde hero opens his eyes to a never-ending whiteness time mass space was meaningless the only color seen besides himself is the red curled form of the once great QB no Kitsun the demon used to stand a magnificent 300 feet is now barely larger than a basketball the blood colored fur ruffled as the demon stretched and groaned from its slumber with a voice that was once deep and deafening was now a soft quiet mule it seems we are now tied together forever human Naruto's eyes bugged from his skull at hearing and seeing the once terror inspiring demon now reduced to a small cute animal you would rather pick up and cuddle then harm with an outstretched arm and accusing finger pointing he shouted holy shit what the fuck happened look around human we are dead well technically we are being taken to Makio Naruto having the intelligence of the many people he had practiced his absorption on he quickly pieced together a question that reflected his confusion ha huh? with a sigh the once nine-tailed demon reformed into a teenage girl of average height and athletic build wrapped in a knee-length deep blue kimono bright Curly red hair swayed just below her shoulder blades and smoldering red eyes were tucked away just behind long black lashes human I am to be reborn back into the realm of demons and be extension you are as well why am I being reborn into a demon's realm I'm just human shouldn't I be going to the like heaven or hell no by your father's deeds we are. 
tethered together in everything but body our power is shared together through life and rebirth never apart for eternity that is the deal your daddy dearest evoked with the gods to defeat me in hopes that I would follow you into your afterlife fortunately he was wrong once a demon always a demon instead you shall follow me again not getting the situation Naruto so I'm a demon now doesn't seem so bad so we get to go back into the world and I get a chance to return to Kanoa and repay my father a Sweet deal to me QB you are not a demon yet still only a human and do not call me QB I have lost that name once my power was distributed in death I am just Kiyomi now my title of power is no more I am the bottom of demons now and we do not return to the human realm we go to Makio and only the strong can open the portals between them the system of demons was about as clear as mud. To Naruto you're gonna have to explain demons from the beginning Kiyomi chan ignorant human since your survival ensures mine as well I shall indulge you she knelt to the ground and sat on her heels and motioned for Naruto to do the same with both comfortably seated she began her explanation we demons were first born of a mighty deity it was infinite in power knowledge and cruelty this god only sought to destroy what other gods had created and nurtured many realms and worlds fell to the corrupt powers eventually all gods had gathered and shattered the powers and mind of the deity into infinite fragments and sealed it away in the realm now named Makio over time the fragments grew from the pieces of the old god's mind and power to become sentient they became demons and all demons are drawn to fight and consume the blood of their brethren to become the deity once more many have overcome the urges to consume solely for the purpose of reforming the god but the only way to gain more power is to drink of demon blood I was one such demon who had failed to suppress the urge to reform when I was at my strongest I had consumed the blood of thousands if not millions and I sought out another who had such power as I did that is what led me to your realm in search of the missing Jubi I was not but a wild beast in search of food that is where your world intersects with demons Kiyomi stopped to clear her throat before she continued on also giving Naruto a chance to ask any questions he had so far Naruto's eyes were unfocused and he mulled over what Kiyomi had said and many questions stood out you said I am not a demon yet how would I become a demon and how would there still be demons if everyone kept killing each other how are you still alive do you still have the urges to consume the demon blood the demoness twirled her hair in thought and spoke in the order you asked I will answer to become a demon I must steal the fragment of power within another demon for yourself which means I will drink the blood of another to give you a demon's body we demons are just like humans once we have overcome the influence of the old god we have emotions many find others who attract them and they reproduce more demons from their combined fragments it is impossible for the shattered god to reform as the other deities keep a close eye to the concentrations of fragments and once a single demon reaches a billionth of the deity's full power they shatter that demon as well and more demons are created from those fragments how i am still alive is once your soul was released from your body instead of your realm's ruling deity we were handled by the strongest demon of Makio and to please those watching I had two choices the ruling demon would take my collected fragments and scatter them amongst all demons and we would simply cease to exist or make a selfless choice of keeping your spirit alive along with mine it also plays into your final question since we are now sharing my single shard your knowledge and personality was able to suppress the urge and grant me lucidity if not for you we would cease to exist until the demon who gained our shard had reached the point where the watching deities shatter it and we reform it could take infinite time before we would have been free even then we wouldn't know to be reborn we would never exist again simply nothing I would have chosen my former state to try and hang on to every shard and fail so for that I thank you Kiyomi finished her answering with her head touching the white equivalent of the floor the blonde's mind was officially blown drinking blood demons having offspring Kiyomi whose power was already unfathomable was not even a billionth of the deity's full power himself being the reason for bringing her from insanity it was all like some sick cosmic joke oh well not much else could surprise Naruto now that is a lot to take in Kiyomi chan but I think I understand please continue with a quick nod Kiyomi began HM where was I again I yes where our worlds connect you see Jubi was like me wild untamed and most of all powerful from what I gathered in my searches through your world there was a time when Jubi ran loose and released mighty attacks and through its battles with humans it seems some fragments of the old god had bled from him and infused with humans providing what your race called chakra and bloodlines when one human was born with a particularly powerful combination of shards he used his knowledge and power to force the Jubi into a hibernation through what your kind called Jinjutsu demons cannot use any chakra based jutsu except for changing the energy into a raw element but the control for the element is not possible demons are weak to jinjutsu since we cannot channel our energies as you humans can with the jubi asleep he forced the slumbering demon into the sky for centuries since then the body has stayed and been covered in dust and rock orbiting your world it is now what you call the moon as the centuries raged on and your race grew and expanded the shards from jubi have been 
split and diluted each person that dies and is buried is then reduced to dirt which the plants grow from and they themselves use the leftover power to create your nature chakra as they have named it eventually your human chakra will dry up and bloodlines will cease to exist since there is not enough of the god's power to provide them with those abilities that is the history of demons and the beginning of chakra kiyomi finished her tale and stood to look upwards into the whiteness it seems the Tail ended just in time we will be in Makio soon when we exit we must find a demon to steal a shard from so that you may have your own body until then you shall reside inside of me like I had in you before Naruto felt a tingling sensation in his hands only to look and see that his body was beginning to dematerialize and flow into the body of Kiyomi he looked to his now eternal partner. I guess I'll see you when you find a shard for the time we spoke I am glad I met you and with that he was completely fused inside of the demoness and he missed the slight blush on her face from his touching words no one has spoken such kind words to me i am glad i met you as well namake's naruto time skip in the white limbo between dimensions a large black portal opened before kiyomi and she confidently strode through as it closed behind her and she was dropped out into makio kiyomi landed in a graceful crouch and the gravelly road gave a crunch under her slight weight hearing the sounds of Lumbering footsteps she quickly dashed into the nearby forest Kiyomi look out startled by the boy now inside her head she stumbled and tripped on a raised tree root her sudden fall save her from a large clawed hand from taking her head off bracing herself from her fall she rolled into a crouch and saw many trees ahead of her broken or huge trenches dug into them above Kiyomi jumped to the side as a bear sized demon crashed into where she just stood getting a good look at the hulking format had black skin that gave off no shine large clawed hands hung off the tree trunks called arms a large barrel chest reminiscent of a gorilla's and large legs tipped with three toes tensed for a jump but the human-like head is what drew the most attention and had no eyes only large gills on its neck and razor teeth that stuck out over both lips clearly meant for tearing of flesh and not chewing grass the overall form had no fat only rippling muscle beneath the coal colored skin the head of the beast swung to her direction and braced itself for take off the demon's powerful legs kicked off leaving potholes where the force of the jump became the great and it shot at kiyomi with claws outstretched and sickly green slime poured from its mouth and trailed behind it with an impressive limbo contest movement kiyomi leaned back when the beast flew over her but the aggressive demon Proof just as limber large clawed hands reached out and ripped into tree bark and swung around the trunk and came flying back at her rolling to the side she quickly observed this demon was very acrobatic as it would swing and leap from overhanging branches and make quick passes to try and kill her increasing its speed by using centrifugal force and redirecting its trajectory hoping to surprise the young demoness by the changes in direction and speed throughout the fight Naruto was anything. But idle during this battle he was quickly watching the pattern the black demon had set up it seemed some of the knowledge being fused with the mind of Kiyomi had passed off some of her centuries of intelligence onto the young blonde this acrobatic demon liked to move in a clockwise pattern around Kiyomi and always struck with the same style the right hand would always be the attacking hand while the left was used for grappling the branches and tree trunks the pattern and style now analyzed. Naruto decided to assist Kiyomi Kiyomi grab that branch from the ground and hold it just above your head in a stabbing position and wait for my signal to thrust it down Kiyomi acknowledged Naruto with a mental nod and snatched the branch while dodging another clawed swipe Naruto's mind was going a mile a minute face the nearest tree to your left and keep the branch ready just as Kiyomi had faced the tree the onyx demon blasted off another tree and came with its claw ready stab now Kiyomi thrust the branch straight down and through the head of the passing demon the new force on the flying demon sent it to the ground and dug a large trench into the dirt falling still the demon writhed and twitched as its nerves fired Kiyomi seeing it down quickly jumped onto its back and took hold of the jaw and back of the head a quick tug and pull the neck snapped with a gunshot sound the demon body finally stilled now for the blood rolling the demon over Kiyomi flashed her sharpened fangs and tore into the throat with abandon she swallowed it all blood cartilage and flesh she greedily ate without care the grass and dirt around the demon was quickly flecked with blood and gore she gave into her wild side and it was shown as once she had consumed most of the blood pouring from the open throat she quickly ripped the chest cavity open with a few quick snaps of the rib cage she had her go at the heart and surrounding arteries and veins blood coated her entire body her face was a solid mask of crimson red her clawed fingers returned to perfectly manicured nails her hair now sticky with the cooling blood she relished in the feeling of the victory once again rejuvenated from the power of the old god flowing through her Kiyomi sat back with a content sigh her moment of bliss was interrupted by the voice in her head Kiyomi we have the new power what do we do shaking off the high the she got from the power the demoness answered you must take hold of the new power inside of me and will. 
it to form you a body on the outside so Naruto inside her mental mindscape looked for this new power inside the mindscape if I was power where would I hide Naruto queried as he walked through the endless grassy plains lit by the full moon that represented Kiyomi's mind walking for what seemed hours through the small rolling hills nothing but knee high grass swaying gently with the breeze falling to his back Naruto gazed at the beautiful moon constructed in the sky and the new twinkling stars. Surrounding it weight stars there weren't any stars before with this new knowledge the blonde reached his hand towards the sky and the stars moved and reacted to his beckoning half of the moving stars collected into his palm and the others rearranged themselves around the moon the stars sunk into his palm and he felt the rush that accompanied them like a drug he was hooked on that feeling closing his palm he thought of his own body, a new one to house his now demonic soul outside the Mindscape sensing the split of her power Kiyomi moved into a larger clearing and soon she saw the twinkling wisps exit from everywhere on her body and coalesced into a solid form in front of her as the final floating wisps settled onto the humanoid form on the ground it flashed bright like the sun forcing her eyes to closed opening them she laid her sensitive eyes upon a magnificent godly form clad in only some loose brown pants. The new body of Naruto was amazing powerful ripped arms flowed into an equally ripped chest and abs his once short spiky blonde hair now reached his shoulder with some of it in a ponytail off the back of his head almost on top his face when he was human had baby fat but his new form had only the sharp facial features only displayed on a man in peak physical condition wrapped around his arms and chest were intricate red blue tattoos that came and curled into sharp points on his pectorals Kiyomi, watched with rapt attention as Naruto blinked his eyes and were sky. Blue iris once hid now only in twin pools of red with orbs of black inside that quickly contracted to form a sharp elliptic shapes and each eye lifting himself into an upright position Naruto flexed and stretched his new muscles out testing their flexibility and strength satisfied that everything was in order he laid his eyes upon his blood covered partner maybe it was his new demonic side speaking but she looked pretty damn sexy layered, all that crimson liquid shaking himself of his thoughts of. How he would take Kiyomi he looked over to the mangled form left of the coal-colored demon feeling slightly unnerved by the carnage the innocent looking blood-covered girl wrought upon it hey Kiyomi don't you think those sensory gills on its neck would be useful being able to sense everything around us Naruto question as he thought back to the effectiveness in battle they had displayed they could prove to be an advantage but we do not gain their abilities from drinking their blood only strength. Given from the god was Kiyomi calculative response as she lost interest in the direction of the conversation and she tried to sense nearby water to rinse off the blood however Naruto continued to stare at the corpse then he looked at his hand then back at the corpse and back to his hand with a shrug he placed it upon a section of skin that wasn't drenched in blood concentrating on drawing in the residue demonic chakra, feeling the familiar sensation following the absorption his mind was filled. With the memories of the demon leaping from trees and drinking the blood of its slain foes Naruto's mind assimilated everything the muscle memory used in the acrobatic style of combat used by this feral demon his body changed with the drawn in powers his once white skin grew darker his nails lengthened and sharpened the set of three gills on each side of the neck even his muscles bulged a little to copy the creature. Finished with the absorption Naruto released the corpse and sat on the blood. Flecked grass Naruto sitting in a meditative position was the sight Kiyomi walked back from her bath to and saw the darkened form she watched with interest as the minutes passed his skin lightened and nail retracted into his body and his muscles lost their doubled mass till they were back to normal only the set of gills on his neck remained opening his eyes Naruto stood and tentatively flared his gills and felt the area around him like sonar vision, the world outside of his eyesight popped into. His head like a blurred picture without color slightly disorientated from the sudden awareness of his surroundings he held his head trying to control the gills to only be used when he wants them to getting it under control he looked to Kiyomi and put on a cocky smile they are pretty useful Kiyomi you sure you don't want them Kiyomi's mouth hung open this man simply rewrote what she knew about the boundaries of demons with an action. That was out of character she grabbed Naruto's arms and proceeded to shake him and demanded him to teach her this ability the blonde laughed as he was shaken by the goddess among demons alright alright I'll teach you Kiyomi spent the rest of the day practicing the absorption technique on leaves so she could get a feel for it and during their practice Naruto found he could subtly nudge Kiyomi's mind to perform the ability correctly, so she got a feel for what was supposed to happen at the end of. The long first day in Makio they found a hollow tree trunk to sleep under they would need all the energy to continue to seek out more demons one day Kanoha shall burn at Naruto's feet time skip the sun rose high into the orange morning sky casting long shadows into the forested area of Makio the sun rays finally reaching the hollow tree Naruto and Kiyomi were staying and they wrestled Kiyomi from her best sleep yet she opened her eyes with an angry scowl and found herself wrapped in the now. 
muscular toned arms of Naruto beating down a blush she slipped from his naked upper body feeling a lot less warm and complete she shook off the feeling and stood outside stretching groaning at the pops and cracks that her back gave off Kiyomi took a deep breath and reveled in the fresh air she had missed since she left for the human realm sitting herself down. At the base of a tree she began her training to control her dense demonic chakra enough to absorb things such as Naruto as done Naruto shivered in his sleep when Kiyomi untangled their bodies on the edge between awake and asleep he tossed in his sleep to find the warmth and wholeness he once had but unfortunately he would go without snarling at the pain the sunlight caused by stabbing at his retina Naruto opened his twin crimson pools his pupils fluctuating until settled upon being slits with an exaggerated yawn showing off his large sharp canine teeth Naruto stretched and flexed his muscles letting his gills appear and flare themselves Naruto gained a quick summary of the area and saw Kiyomi sitting under a tree turning the many green leaves and objects around her brown making quick strides he took a seat next to Kiyomi Naruto watched Kiyomi concentrate on the small piece of vegetation between her delicate fingers slowly but surely he could see the fresh green color drain away like wet paint washing off a wall without even thinking the blonde put his hands over hers and lets his own energy flow with hers wear. Their hands met the deep ocean blue of Naruto's chakra began to mix with the raging red of Kiyomi's like a magical dance inspired by the wind the chakra danced and swirled intermingling and forming a whole new royal purple color like a thick liquid the chakra dripped from their hands and where each drop fell the grass would flourish and grow suddenly coming from the euphoric feeling she got from their chakra intermingling and flowing between them she pulled her hands to her chest and pushed herself up from the spot next to Naruto with the sudden movement suddenly her entire world changed form all that she saw was now overlapped by a static picture and everything around her being the same the sudden disorientation caused her to buckle and fall to the ground coughing and retching the sensation of extreme vertigo overwhelming her seeing his partner suddenly collapse Naruto moved next to her Kiyomi are you alright speak to me he saw that her once perfect ivory colored neck now had a set of gills and those gills were flaring erratically placing a hand over each side he forced his chakra into her and with a practiced method willed the gills to relax and recede slowly Kiyomi gained her equilibrium and steadied her vision moving from the tiny puddle of bile and saliva she threw up Naruto grabbed hold of her and picked Kiyomi up bridal style and set her next to the tree Kiyomi lay there and looked into the worried eyes of Naruto it seems when we mixed chakra I received your Absorbed gill ability a deep sigh escaped Naruto and a small smile graced his lips I guess so how are you feeling I am feeling fine do not be so concerned I have experienced worse Kiyomi responded with a haughty tone the smile left the blonde's face hearing her disregard him like he was stupid apparently I can control the transformations with some well applied chakra now you just need to learn how to control the changes Kiyomi ran her fingers through the lengths of fire red hair hanging over her shoulder seeing the beautiful smile leave Naruto's face upset her and she couldn't figure it out why she was upset she was once a bloodthirsty all-powerful demon emotions shouldn't affect her she is above it Naruto watched her play with her hair she looked so perfect perfect he used to think his friends back in Kanoha were perfect thinking back to Kanoha the now demon man was set straight he received a second chance a chance to grow faster and stronger a chance to avenge his wrongful murder by his own family a chance to kill he wouldn't waste this he will be powerful enough he will return to Kanoa standing up he flared his gills and sensed another nearby demon it was small but every little bit counted darting off Naruto headed right towards it scanning ahead analyzing everything around him to find every escape route and close it off from his prey and a clearing the slender form of a demoness with small horns protruding from her pale green hair she busied herself with foraging the small berry bush gently placing the small berries into her basket sensing an incoming presence she whipped around to see the chiseled form of Naruto spring from a tree quickly jumping to the side to avoid him she dropped her basket's contents into the grass below the demoness didn't stand a chance before she could get to her feet and run Naruto was already on top of her with his hands around her neck the woman looked fearfully into the blood red slits of her assailant and rasped out please I have a family don't do this Naruto's slitted eyes dilated a bit as he stared into the pleading eyes of his victim is this really worth it to end the life of this woman and her family so I can have my revenge quickly his mind was bombarded with the memory of all his friends smiling and cheering at his execution all the insults and taunts the look of pure happiness on his father's face as he stomped on his chest yes this is definitely worth it the woman saw his eyes soften and his grip slacken 
For a moment relief and happiness spread through her small body she would get to go see her family again but just as suddenly his eyes sharpened and his grip came back stronger resigned to her fate and tears poured from her eyes until her struggling and tears stopped Naruto saw his victim either lose consciousness or die he quickly replaced his hands with his fangs and began to rip and feast on the flesh and blood that poured from the open wound blood filled his senses he only felt smelt saw tasted and heard the sound of it consumed by this feeling he quickly began to gorge himself on everything he could get his claw into much more gruesome than Kiyomi's display he ate all he could snapping the frail bones of his victim and scrapped all the marrow he could unknown to Naruto he had an audience of one Kiyomi watched her eternal partner strip the body of everything consumable and then use his absorption to take everything she knew even she hadn't been this thorough in drinking the blood but Naruto went for every drop from every vein and artery the ground was drenched in blood many plants and other vegetation would grow in that spot to forever lay as the marking for the murder demoness Naruto looked over his blood soaked body and without even knowing it his chakra flowed out of his body and pushed all the blood from his pants and off his skin till he was back into pristine condition not a hair out of place snapping his head to the tree Kiyomi was crouched near he called out I know you have been watching me is this not how it is done to gain their strength walking out into the clearing the demoness stood on the edge staring at Naruto yes that is how to do it but I have never seen any demon at the level of savagery and aggression that you displayed Naruto's eyes sharpen into thin slits once again so I am more savage and primitive than a demon it is good to know your point of view I thought you wanted to regain your lost power too Attain what you once had am I not accomplishing both our goal this way the blonde shouted Kiyomi was startled by his assumptions they were spot on but now that she had lucidity and control over her urge to kill she wasn't as desperate as Naruto seemed to be to regain power she was planning on wandering Makio and find other feral demons to slay there was no need to attack the more peaceful of demons unfortunately Naruto didn't seem to see a problem with killing any demon he came across seeing no response Naruto turned to the direction his victim's home was if I am such a savage then do not follow because I plan to finish what I have started with those words he dashed into the thick brush outside the clearing making not but a sound towards his next victims for once in her eternal life Kiyomi was scared her partner Naruto seemed to have the bloodthirst of a feral demon but the intelligent mind of a more domestic demon a truly terrifying combination indeed shortly after her thoughts were invaded by the terrified screams cut short they would haunt her for many nights to come time skipped three years later and what a long three years it was there wasn't a day yet Naruto returned to normal from his second day in Makio he was never the same maybe it was the demonic whisperings of his mind or he simply did anything he wanted because he could Kiyomi could still hear the screams of children and parents alike as Naruto tore apart and raised the first home flashback zipping through the Trees with the grace and agility of a monkey Naruto swung from tree to tree pushing off branches causing only the sound of rustling leaves from the powerful leg muscles shaking the trees he quickly came upon the small log hut and large man and three small children ran around laughing and yelling seeing the built man with horns that came from the top of his head and swooped back towards it neck shaggy black hair covered the base of the horns and piercing black eyes, skin the tree lean showing. He sensed Naruto's approach quickly ushering the three small demons inside the hut he called show yourself how did you find this place swiftly dropping onto the grass Naruto walked from the shade some blood still wet in the corners of his mouth he gave a cruel faint smile and inhaled deeply looking past the man and at the home your family will help me in my path of revenge whether you resist or not I will take from you everything he said as he took slow calculated step towards the horned man. What are you talking about leave now you have no business here the raven haired man said as he took a guarded stance Naruto quickly saw the man shift and began to laugh you wish to know how I found this place correct well I suppose I can show you closing his slitted red eyes his shape slowly changed his hair turned pale green and his muscles slimmed out and his height shortened until he looked identical to the woman he tore apart and consumed just minutes ago please Asako don't resist Naruto called out the man's name he gleaned from his victim's memories na nanami what is going on naruto slowly walked to the man still in the form of the now named nanami and reached his arms out like he wanted a hug and the man clearly confused accepted the hug during the embrace naruto's form returned to normal and the demon man felt the change looking down and seeing nanami no longer there but the man from before asako didn't even know what had hit him before a clawed hand was through his stomach wall and clenched around his innards tightly ripping his hand from the surprised demon Naruto quickly tackled him and began his gorging of blood and flesh once again just as ravenous and messy Asako let out a barely audible exhale of air as his life-giving liquid was pumped from his body by a frantic heartbeat with pieces of flesh and blood scattered in every direction was the scene the three children saw as they peeked out from the crack in the door the oldest of the three grabbed both there 
mouth shut before they could scream and dragged them away from the door holding them as they tried to scream through the hands hurrying to the exit furthest away from the gore they barely stepped out and Naruto was already in front of them grinning madly the three children quickly dashed away from the crazed blonde murderer screaming the whole way and quickly each screaming child was brought down and killed with minimal blood loss snapping of the neck or a punch, with enough force to cause. Cerebral hemorrhaging Naruto seemed to have learned from his previous two kills and sought to preserve all the power giving liquid without giving it to the soil after finishing his meal he used demonic chakra to set the entire house and bodies ablaze the raging red fire flickered and reflected off his blood red irises white teeth shining against the flames Naruto never forgot to absorb every bit of knowledge and physical trait afforded to him, by his victims you never know when someone will. No a secret end flashback the red-haired demoness still shuddered to think about how Naruto came back from his hunt she shouldn't be affected by the way Naruto acted she was once the same but it got to her more than she would be willing to admit she was terrified of Naruto and at the same time terrified for him one night Naruto returned to her. With a wild lustful look in his twin blood pools flashback entering the makeshift hut Naruto growled deep within his chest as he looked at the live form. Of Kiyomi kneeling next to a fire turning the coals and stoking the small flame quickly grabbing her by the waist he pulled her flush to his muscled body and let the vibrations from his growling entice her Kiyomi's eyes widened as she could practically taste the raw lust wafting off Naruto pushing away from his body Kiyomi freed herself and stood across from the lust filled demon Naruto stop leave and take a swim in the river a sly smile, played on his lips you don't see how this is going to. Work to you Naruto stalked around Kiyomi I'm not asking to do this as the strongest I'm forcing you Kiyomi made a break for the exit to let Naruto cool off unfortunately with him being stronger he was also faster cutting off her path to freedom he grabbed her arm forcefully and threw her to the ground making short work of the deep blue kimono and matching bra and panties he began to knead her breasts and said you will serve me whenever I ask the tears flowed from her crimson eyes Kiyomi was a virgin since never wanting it when she was feral it seemed Naruto would take her here and now she couldn't escape so she begged Naruto don't do this please stop suddenly everything was quiet except the sobbing from Kiyomi opening her bloodshot eyes she saw the unfocused and devoid of life Naruto inside Naruto's head thousands of memories played spanning his entire 18 years of life both as human and demon all the faces of those he once loved in the face of all those he had slaughtered in his quest for revenge and it all stopped at one particular scene a younger Naruto sitting in a chair listening as his entire world was torn down and burned around him he screamed I haven't done anything coming back to the real world Naruto's once slitted eyes dilated back into circular pupils his eyes darted around taking into full view what he was attempting to commit quickly rolling to his heels he sprung up and towards the door his eyes spoke everything his mouth didn't say confusion Regret and most of all fear end flashback ever since that night Kiyomi would only see Naruto in passing he seemed to stay away from her she never had another incident like that again each and every morning Kiyomi would feel different slightly more powerful and new things she didn't know before only after staying alert all night did she find out why in the dark just before dawn she would find Naruto looking haggard and disheveled into the small hut she made and he would sit next to her and his Unfocused gaze would stare at her after what seemed hours he would gently grab her head and begin pushing his chakra through her regulating his power into her all the knowledge he gained from his daily hunting physical traits and beneficial anomalies he would transfer one of the major changes she found was she could manipulate many animals insects and even a fellow demon she came across coming along with the mental manipulation she could now feel Naruto's surface emotions and the gist of his thoughts most of them involving his revenge but she would sense some deeper thoughts on becoming a god and having absolute power strange enough she would try to wake up just before he came she loved the feeling of warmth and wholeness she got from Naruto's ocean blue chakra flowing into her Kiyomi never told Naruto that she knew of his nightly visits fearing he would stop back with Naruto and Kiyomi finally after three long years Naruto's aggressive approach to gathering power had paid off today was the day the final requirements were met for a successful hole to be torn between realms Kiyomi could feel Naruto's eagerness to cross over his unrestrained power flowing off him in waves like a heartbeat it only got stronger and faster when she began the ritual to open a portal the elements of each hole in space must be balanced fire to fire water to water and so on opening a portal was actually very simple if a demon on each side could provide the elements but to do it alone is why it required more power than most demons could gain to manifest the elements needed in a different realm took more than Kiyomi had alone but with Naruto next to her ready to give his chakra it would go off without a hitch slowly but surely you could see the tear in space form beginning with just a distortion in the air like looking though water it began to grow and soon you could see a rainforest with a miasma 
a fog settling along the ground it was a sight to behold from the human world the air itself seemed to tear apart to show a window into Makio Naruto stepped through the Terran space with Kiyomi not far behind as the portal stitched itself back together Naruto took a deep inhale of the thick humid air quickly ascertaining where this climate would be they were in the land of water a large feral smile crossed Naruto's lips I am back Kanoa your time is near an end he shouted to the sky Naruto Step through the Terran space with Kiyomi not far behind as the portal stitched itself back together Naruto took a deep inhale of the thick humid air quickly ascertaining where this climate would be they were in the land of water a large feral smile crossed Naruto's lips I am back Kanoa your time is near an end he shouted to the sky it seemed the elements themselves responded to his declaration as the wind picked up and dark rain clouds rolled in with lightning flashing through the sky the Concussive thunderclaps felt on the ground Kiyomi shielded her eyes from the hard rainfall and whipping winds from her limited vision and hearing she could see and hear Naruto's loud laughter in between the thunder soon enough Naruto got himself under control and called out Kiyomi let's move I wish to see all that has changed since I was last alive maybe pick up a few new skills for us to utilize NE with those words large leathery black wings erupted from his back in a haze of darkness after. Wrapping his arms around Kiyomi's waist he gave a powerful flap of his wings and took to the sky with his demoness partner clutching to him tightly as they sailed high above the ground Kiyomi couldn't help but snuggle slightly into the chest of her partner don't get it wrong she was still afraid he might one day turn his sights on her like he had done a few years back but the feeling she got from being close to him was worth the danger Naruto felt his partner shift in his python like grip. Kiyomi's head resting just below his chin her scent filling his nose his pupils began to contract and sharpen into thinner slits thinking quickly before he lost his remaining common sense he shifted his entire body from the human shape to that of a large bat-like creature his feet elongated and claws formed on his long toes his long blonde hair shortened and created a mane reaching down his back and his fangs shifting into sharp points with his transformation complete he dropped his passenger from his strong arms and gently caught her with his powerful talons careful to not scratch her perfect ivory skin flying swiftly into the night sky Naruto's demon-powered hearing could pick up the sounds of fighting and clashing weapons taking a hard left turn he swooped down into a marsh watching the many ninja leap around and release jutsu all over Naruto thought it was amusing to watch these ants fight amongst themselves seeing the chance to pick up the knowledge of recent happenings he Lifted Kiyomi from his talons and flipped her onto his back Jeez Naruto learned to be a little more gentle with a lady Kiyomi said as her equilibrium was thrown off by being flipped around HN I will when I find one it seemed even after 3 years he was still a smart ass hearing Naruto be sarcastic it was rare and shown he still wasn't all changed there's still hope for you Naruto Kiyomi thought as she hugged him from her pity back position, spotting a down ninja in the mist ANBU gear Naruto. Angled downwards for a quick snatch up it must have been a surprise to all who witnessed that the ANBU stood holding his side until a large leathery form crashed into him quickly latching onto the ninja's shoulders Naruto gave a few powerful flaps of his mighty wings and took off into the sky while the ninja struggled in his tightening grip Naruto took a firm hold of his head and began to absorb everything he knew from his secret bondage fetish to the high level rebel prisoner locked beneath the Mizukage tower and everything in between including the bijou sealed within the Mizukage himself Naruto cut hard and aimed for the battleground seeing as he had gathered what he wanted flew near the earth and plunged the ninja head first into the dirt quickly shredding the skin and cartilage from the one side of his face and many cracks were heard in succession as each vertebrae were smashed into each other compacting the spine from being 18 inches to being 10 a large bloody trench was. Left in Naruto's wake the gruesome scene startled each of the combating ninjas and the fight quickly turned into a retreat on both sides deciding to share his newfound knowledge he let his deep ocean blue chakra seep from his body and into Kiyomi from the ground it looked like a blue shooting star racing across the dark sky quickly assimilating the knowledge of all jutsu chakra regulation exercises and information Kiyomi quickly supplied her thoughts on what she felt Naruto was already. Thinking the three-tailed turtle will be weakened inside of a Jinchuriki Kiyomi said excellent then it will be our next stepping stone to Kanoa Naruto responded flapping his wings quicker to gain altitude he coasted along the air currents towards his destination Kirigakure deep beneath the Mizukage tower Meitarumi sat shackled to the chakra sapping wall her once pristine styled auburn hair now lay lifeless around her due to lack of bathing and combing May's light green eyes seemed dull in the Low lit cell thinking of how she got here further depressed her flashback two months this was at the final siege on Kirigakure it would determine the victor in this blood stained rebellion the forces of the Mizukage versus the rebel factions each sought dominance in the same territory but only one could remain Yagura stop this your forces dwindle and only Kirigakure remains for bastion of safety may 
spoke she wanted to spare everyone from this battle. I am sorry Meitarumi, but I will not lose. This war once your rebellion has been quelled Kiri will be ushered into a new era Chijiri no Sado will become a power to be feared so be it Yagura today I will destroy your corrupt government and end our village's bloody ways with those words each opposing sides clashed water Jutsu flew overhead washing away many ninja the dirt became mud from the water and blood soaking the ground screams of agony were abundant across the battlefield as limbs were removed by sharp weapons and dislocated or torn off from the high-pressured water being spewed but the fight between titans was only just beginning separated from the rest of the common ninja stood one shinobi and one kunoichi their eyes spoke of determination and the will to achieve victory through any means standing 20 yards apart their gazes bore into each other waiting for the first attack then it happened like a clash of thunder they clashed holding their opponent's fist may grabbed the forearm of yugura and went for a shoulder toss yugura was unfazed while upside down in the air he began to make signs for jutsu Sweitun. Ashitama the powerful stream of water tore up the ground leaving deep gouges in the land jumping to the left Mei avoided the water jutsu and began her own yotan. Ryuki Nami making a sweeping motion with her hands the earth quickly became molten lava as the lava moved it gained speed and height picking up more molten ground the Mizukage watched on with an uninterested gaze as the wave of burning death. Raged towards him holding out his hands the green chakra of Sanbai burst into life around him as the lava touched his outstretched hands he made the motion of opening curtains and the lava split and quickly fell on either side of him Yagura walked towards the stunned Mei until he saw her face of fear turn into confidence corking an eyebrow he followed her gaze to his arm flipping it over he saw the intricate design of a seal written on paper stuck to his pale skin eyes widening upon the Realization of what that seal does he went for the corner of it to rip it off, but with the ram sign from May it dissolved into his skin his body felt searing hot pain as his bijou's power were forced back through his chakra gates and into his seal Yagura's lapse in concentration was all May needed to take the upper hand dashing to him she planted a firm punch to his solar plexus forcing his breath out and his body off the ground she followed her strike with a downward elbow to the back of his Head Yagura's mind was swimming in the pain as chakra coils burned from the seal's doing and he was pretty sure his skull was cracked from either the powerful elbow to his head or the force of hitting the ground face first rolling to the side he dodged the heel drop from his opponent which dented then ground under the force holding his hairline fractured ribs Yagura felt true fear for the first time. In a long time it seemed his bija that once was an asset was now a weakness against this. Opponent May never gave him the chance to retaliate she gave him a split kick to his jaw sending him high into the air with a powerful jump she stopped his ascent with snap kick to his side throwing him many yards away tumbling across the dirt Yagura came to a stop facing the sky as the dark clouds of late night shower loomed overhead pushing himself into a kneeling position he could feel each of his injuries throbbing painfully his mask of indifference had long been cracked and the pain he felt was shown on his face May stood 10 yards in front of the prone form of the Mizuka Jigura for the acts you have committed and guided you will die on this battlefield pulling a kunai from her robe she went for a quick slice of the jugular or carotid artery but her hand was caught by her second and command Ao with the kunai stopped Ao thrust his index and middle finger into the pharynx of May closing off the air supply inability to talk May's confusion turned to fear as she could feel her body quickly trying to get her much needed air her chest heave trying to draw in breath her stomach muscles began to violently contract to help the diaphragm all her body's efforts were in vain as he vision darkened and the cold grip of unconsciousness tightened its hold she could hear Ao say attacking the mizukage is treason end of flashback so with herself captured and the rebel forces scattered and unorganized it seemed Yagura defeated her years of effort through the person she thought she could trust most quietly sobbing at her failure she failed to notice the tall blonde man and fire-haired woman seeming to walk through the walls may pulled her tear-stained hands from her face and saw a shirtless man ripping the chains from the solid chakra reinforced concrete walls her shock was compounded on when he knelt down and tore the cuffs around her petite wrists like they were tissue paper the tall blonde stared right into may's twin green pools are you made to roomy high security Prisoner number 0334 May's voice was soft and strained from two months of silence and poor hydration Yeah, I'm May who are you Naruto stood up who I am is unimportant the yellow haired man continued to stare into her eyes what is important is what you know of the sandby even after her solitary confinement she still held the mental acuity to gain something what will I get from telling you what I know while she spoke Naruto briefly pondered on why he didn't just drain her knowledge and leave without all 
this talking as eyes sharpen at her ploy of extortion I do not have to make deals with your kind you will tell me or I will forcefully take what I want and leave you to rot in this cell until death the blonde voice was almost a shout and held the sound of cold hard truth to back his claim May's softened eyes flickered over to her apparent rescuer's companion with long red hair woman clothed in a deep blue kimono who seemed uneasy and shifted her weight from one leg to the other and twirled. Her hair between her fingers when they focused on Naruto again she saw his boring gaze waiting for an answer May could tell when not to tempt this man she quickly spilled what she knew Yagura is the Jinchuriki of the Sandbai he uses its power almost exclusively to strike fear into his opponents and sow chaos among his enemies I had studied his combat style and abilities extensively so that one day I could face him in battle, and take the title of Mizukage from him May continued on with more details of his preferred tie and ninjutsu Naruto remembered everything he ever heard or saw his intelligence and comprehensive powers were far past what most would see as genius when they finished her lecture on Yagura's powers he turned to his partner and they walked back through the wall like it wasn't even their maid saw them leave and felt disappointed she thought that if he had left her alive he should have taken her or killed her for fear of her telling Yagura of him the Yotan princess sat Against the wall escape was not an option her chakra was low from constantly being drained and the amount of ninja she would face she would die before she saw daylight not a moment after her resignation to waiting for death a petite pale hand reached from the wall behind her took a hold of her shoulder and dragged her back through the solid rock when the guards checked on her cell they would find no trace of her not a hair scent or chakra trail she simply vanished into the rock wall back in. Kanoha over the last three years Rei Namikes was in poor shape her once vibrant red hair was listless and fell around her head she had gotten a lot less than the recommenced hours of sleep over the past three years her dreams were haunted by the gutted form of her supposed non-existent elder brother her nightmares would always bring her back to the village market square where the demon's execution occurred the world would be frozen only herself, and QB would be mobile her father would be frozen mid stomp and her brother would stand with blood still dripping from his neck wound and just stare into her eyes like he was searching her very soul no words were spoken no matter how desperately she wished to speak and yell at him her dreams would feel like hours they were silent and almost perfectly still just Naruto focused on her Minato and Kushina had seen the change in their daughter after the death of Kyuubi, and thought maybe she was having nightmares of it coming back so they sought the help of Anochi Yamanaka to diagnose her and hopefully help her get some sleep all the therapy and mind jutsu did nothing to discover her problem she never told them her nightmares were of the execution day of QB he was the forbidden topic for her parents although recently her dreams had begun to worsen instead of the world frozen QB would begin to fight back against her father's stumps or the execution itself and each time she dreamed of his resistance he would be stronger and fight harder until finally the demon broke free QB began to slaughter everyone until only they remained as blood covered hands reached out to touch her cheek so close she could feel the warmth of the blood on his hands Ray wake up you're going to be late for training you know your father doesn't like to be kept waiting Kushina yelled from the hallway successfully ending her nightmare groaning in approval at the abrupt end to the worst dream she has had in three years Ray dressed in her standard uniform she received from her mother all right mom she shouted back with her outfit properly fitted and tightened to prevent any malfunctions she looked over herself in the mirror and briefly saw her deceased brother with the grim look of determination he had on the day of his execution she had never seen him once in her life before that day in the council room Minato talked incessantly about the QB biting time in Kanoha, and about how once the deity powered Fuinjutsu fully melded her brother in the demon together forever they could return to their rightful home and live happily shaking away the memories of her family's sacrifice she left her modest room down the stairs and settled herself into a chair at the dining room table for breakfast glancing at the clock she shoveled the rest of breakfast into her open mouth and sprinted out the door and quickly sped down the road to the training grounds dodging people left and right today was the day her father would begin to teach her his famous Hiration, but first she must go over all she was taught her name Tai Jen and Fuinjutsu Rei was trained as all aspects of the Kunoichi to perfection she was a representative of the Hokage by blood she would excel above all others she was a Namikaze with Naruto many miles from Kirigakure slowly rising from the ground Kiyomi and Naruto stood tall while Mei collapsed to the ground taking large gulps of air what the asterisk gasp hell was that Mei yelled as best she could Kiyomi looking at her fellow female 
gave a soft laugh that my little jailbird was earth travel it is the greatest way to move around undetected Naruto paid no attention to his companions closed his eyes and took a couple deep breaths his gills once again flaring into life his world was painted around him seeing everything around him from small insects to large mammals foraging around the humid forest sensing no one within his large awareness his gills sealed up and once again were soft pale skin tuning his gaze to the two beauties before him Naruto felt the primal urges rising to take them both like he had tried to Kiyomi years back pushing those instincts from his mind he could still see the fear etched into the crimson eyes of Kiyomi a deep sense of regret filled his emotions before he thought back to his execution as murder by his own father if only the rage he felt could kill then he would walk right to Kanoha but Naruto must bide his time and take away everything from Kanoha before dealing the final deadly blow with the strong emotions Kiyomi could read from Naruto she felt his lust the regret but they both dimmed to make way for the deep hatred that bubbled up to the surface such a powerful emotion quickly crippled Kiyomi's sensory ability her mind began shutting down every other sense to compensate for the overload losing her equilibrium to the experience she stumbled and latched onto the nearest object to stabilize her which happened to be the sturdy arms of Naruto catching her quickly once he felt the sudden weight holding her gently once more his eyes hardened and his more animalistic features began to form again catching himself before he did something unwanted he set the demoness on her feet and covered his nose in an attempt to stop the lust inducing aroma wafting off his partner watching the scene with a critical eye may saw how her savior seemed to react to the other female seeing this as a good time to interject so what are your names Kiyomi partially distracted by the Feelings and clips of thought she picked up from Naruto answered I am Kiyomi and the muscled man as Naruto Yuzu was all she got out before the aforementioned man interrupted it is just Naruto watching the setting sun it calm the burning embers Naruto felt simmering inside of him come let's find a place to stay the night we will make plans to kill Yagura tomorrow those words resonated deep within Mayor humiliating defeat by her own subordinate now may sought to simply destroy both Mizukic and Ao the blonde flooded yukai around as being triggering a transformation as powerful bone wings sprouted from his back accompanied with a large barbed tail growing from the base of his spine which by the looks of the tip meant only death to those struck his bare feet lengthened and toes formed into large three talons facing forward Naruto's red iris expanded till his scara was bathed in red as well as hair formed into a Shaggy Lion's mane of sorts letting loose a shock inducing roar Naruto's transformation was complete I haven't been in this form in months gesturing to his now open arms he intended for those two to find a suitable place to hold on to May's mouth was wide open at this impossible feat before her Kiyomi was unfazed by the chimera form he took she quickly wrapped Naruto's left arm around her and called to the still stunned may you should grab on or we're leaving you behind that seemed to shake her from her stupor and Mei latched onto his right side leaning forward Naruto flexed his wings upwards till just the tips touched and then with a powerful down beat of his wings they lifted up into the air quickly ascending past the tree line and further into the orange dyed sky Mei screaming the whole way will stop it you won't fall came the transformed man's voice closing her light green eyes Mei took a couple steadying breaths and when she reopened her emerald pools it was like being in heaven the Soft white clouds gave off a tangerine color from the setting sun and the cool upper atmospheric air rushed past her face and uncovered legs the thick rolling clouds once seemed far above a ninja's touch were now only a hair's breath away reaching out her delicate hands into a passing nimbus the condensation collected on her palms may felt at peace and nothing mattered anymore not the fate of Kiri or Yagura not even the muscular god amongst men, holding her waist tightly quickly hiding her blushing red face she turned to look at more clouds alas this feeling came to an end and Naruto closed his wings for an aerial dive to the gigantic inactive volcano that created this massive island landing on a flat shelf Naruto set his two companions down while he moved to the rock facey a few moments before Naruto created the cave may had another question Kiyomi back in the prison what did he mean by my kind Kiyomi suppressed a yawn and stretched it's exactly what you think we aren't human then what are you Naruto input his part to the answer without looking from the rock we are demons placing his strong hands upon it he forced Yukai into the shape he desired and before their eyes it opened up into a small but cozy cave Kiyomi rushed past Naruto and quickly transformed her clothes into thinner nightwear and found a raised section to the cave and stretched out before quickly succumbing to sleep May moved at a much more sedated pace she noticed Naruto never entered the cave and instead slept outside shrugging to herself she was too interested at the moment finding another flat space above the floor she lay down and stretched for the first time since she was imprisoned comfortably positioned her eyes fluttered until she too fell into blissful sleep time skip may open her bleary eyes to the shaded ceiling of the cave wiping the sleep from her face she glanced over to Kiyomi who knelt on her bed perfectly still opening her mouth 
to say something they found Kiyomi answered the question before she could ask I am meditating to concentrate on reading the thoughts of Naruto Mei's face was the picture of confusion why does she need to she was brought from her thoughts by Kiyomi answering her unasked question read the thoughts of Naruto since we arrived in the land of water and closer to Naruto's desire of revenge his chakra when mixed with mine has began to feel dark and angry it is coarse against my chakra and harder to work with Mei wondered how Yagura was his object of Revenge what does Naruto have against Yagura and how are you reading my thoughts letting out a soft angelic laugh Kiyomi humored the moral oh Yagura is but a stepping stone to Naruto in his quest for vengeance as for my ability I acquired it along our travels and it does suit our needs what is his ultimate goal if the sandby plays a role obviously killing someone correct may questioned and if you learned how to read minds then you must be able to impart the knowledge onto others Kiyomi merely wagged an index finger as if to scold a young child such secrets aren't mine to tell us for my mind reading it would be hard to explain to anyone who hasn't experienced what naruto and i share oh yeah and what exactly do you share may huffed out at being blocked off from finding out her savior's objective to put it simply we are two beings bound as one for an eternity together how was may intelligent reply to the answer that had a far deeper meaning and history than she knew were you always bound together no we were once apart I was a mighty and powerful demon he was just Kiyomi never finished because a large bear thudded against the ground between them turning their heads they saw the imposing winged form of Naruto silhouetted against the rising sun receding his wings Naruto used his naturally sharpened nails to begin skinning and peeling back the fur from the bear I was human the blonde said coldly blurting out her question then how did you become stuck together and Naruto yourself change into demon if you could watch Naruto's emotions on a line graph you would see that a usual flat line changed drastically at the uttering of her words it would be spiking and just keep going up along with the rage he felt the female duo could practically hear Naruto's teeth grinding and cracking under the severe pressure they were under and just as quickly Yukai would cover the crack knit the tooth back to normal and the process would repeat the scraps of skin held in Naruto's Hands bubbled and liquefied pooling on the ground yesterday Kiyomi was nearly incapacitated by just Naruto thinking about Kanoha but when someone indirectly brought up his every feeling of betrayal and pain from his human life now Kiyomi's body sought to stop this and it automatically began trying to force the disturbance away with nudges and mental prods to leave Naruto's mind register the suggestions Kiyomi, Sen is being his own and he stood from his spot and walked for the exit leaping. High into the morning sky with his black and bone wings erupting from his back mid-leap and he zoomed into the clouds and was out of sight within seconds the sky rumbled and thundered as the sun was blocked out by the darkening rain clouds Kiyomi relaxed as the mental barrage stopped and she could hear he own thoughts and properly breathe looking over to the human female Mei was flat on her back hyperventilating being so close to an explosion of hate, filled Yukai the half-skinned bear was mostly liquefied like someone has poured acid over the flesh what was that may shouted once she steadied her heart rate naruto is mentally scarred from his life as a human and his anger was only amplified upon the sealing process being incomplete kiyomi said sadly as she nursed a headache what sealing process kiyomi sighed and supposed if may was to tag along on this adventure then she should know who it is she is dealing with i was once the kyubi no yoko second most powerful demon to cross the dimensional lines and ravage this world she began Naruto was once my Jinchuriki the seal used by the Yande Mokage was unlike any other before this one was powered by the gods themselves to one day merge our spirits together and when Naruto died I would follow him into death and beyond what do you mean once were the Kyubi Kiyomi could tell that this would be a long question and answer session luckily she could still feel Naruto far above the clouds unleashing amounts of Yukai she didn't know he had it would be a long while before he came down to recover it is what I said I am no longer the QB but that doesn't make sense you're here so why aren't you the QB threading her fingers through her long red hair the answer to your question will be found when my explanation is done successfully shutting me up Kiyomi continued Naruto's village Kanoha sought to use my great power through a Jinchuriki hundreds of years I had been here and the arrogance displayed was sickening their Shodame was the first to try his hand at my sealing as Mokutan had calmed each of the other nine Bijou and thought I would be just as easily tamed and sealed they were wrong the Senji used his own son to be the conduit for my power his seals unraveled before his eyes and his child suffered his punishment as the boy was disintegrated when my Yukai escaped flashback standing at the mouth of what looked to be the entrance so large that the tallest buildings of Kanoha would fit twice on top of each other and still have room the Shodame Hashirama Senju stood holding a small baby with a platoon of his personal ANBU handing out each of the other bijou to placate the nation's Hashirama save the QB for Kanoha to keep the village stronger than everyone they would need the strongest of bijou fall in line men today Kanoha takes another step above everyone else and my son shall be the conduit for 
Our rise for Kanoa Hashirama raised their moral gave them courage to face a nightmare rushing into the bowls of the earth they ran an arrowhead formation with Hashirama leading them down the darkened spiral tunnel they ran for five minutes before the tunnel opened up into a cave so large Kanoa itself could hide and never be seen Hashirama could feel they were miles below the surface of the planet QB opened her eyes and saw the arrival of those ants she could feel the minuscule amounts of demon yukai flowing through them watching them spread out around her they began molding their chakra and she felt her power being drawn to the small child covered and encircled in seals thrashing her tails and head she flattened many of the a and bu hoping to contain her she tried to pull away from the child while using a tail to squish the impudent human who wanted her power but she was stopped by a large tree root forming a cage over the child smacking the roots away she almost pierced the child but green chakra enshrouded the child and wrapped around her tail and pulled her towards the seals more trees sprouted and began binding each tail and limb holding them firm while she was siphoned into the boy finally the last of QB was gone locked away into the senju to use as he saw fit Hashirama inspected the seals flowing across his son's body each flowing brush stroke of the ceiling was perfect scooping up his child Hashirama held him close to his body today men we mourn the loss of those here, but we celebrate that their sacrifice was not in vain Kanoha will never fall holding the boy up for all the ANBU left the Senju was almost orgasmic at the prospect of teaching his son how to harness the QB and usher Kanoha into the golden age of domination over the elemental countries before the leaf ninja could even leave the cave baby Senju let out a ear-piercing wail and its skin became unbearably hot Hashirama, gently set his child on the cool ground to inspect what went. Wrong when the blanket was removed he witnessed each line of the Jinchuriki seals were separating and evaporating off the child's skin at an alarming rate before he could even try and stop the event red yukai pulsed outwards and everyone were launched away from the epicenter Hashirama looked from his fallen position as his son flailed its tiny arms around seeking relief from the unbearable pain it was feeling the skin of the child bubbled and broiled before misting off the muscles below went. Through the painful process QB's chakra kept the child alive through the entire ordeal as it was liquefied only when the bones began to show did the unearthly cries stop the show dame had a front row seat to the slow and painful death of his firstborn child the red yukai solidified into the blood red fox form of QB ha 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 did you get a good look mortals this is the fate of all who dare face me leave spread what you have seen remember the blood of that child covers your hands the Kanoa Ninja made haste and ran for the exit with Hashirama's spear heading the group salty tears flowed from Hashirama's eyes the sight of his dying child forever burned into his mind he thought of only revenge I vow QB you will once day be the weapon of Kanoha or die end flashback clearing her throat that was but the first of many attempts to harness my powers and each failed just as the first Shodame's second child faced the same fate night aims three children each were ripped apart from my Yukai Sandame used three of his five children and those three perished as well finally the attempt stopped 30 years I slept undisturbed until the Yandame himself entered my domain he opened one of his scrolls and out spewed thousands of his Horatian Kanai using his Fuenjutsu he teleported around me slicing at my quickly reforming body successfully earning my anger he retreated to the entrance of my home the Namikaze taunted me a daring game against my power I chased him out of my Chambers he must have stashed his kanai along the way for every time I would near attack the Yandane would flash a few hundred away finally we reached Kanoha and he stood in his ceiling circle with Naruto wrapped at his feet I watched the Okage flash through many seals before he slammed his hands onto Naruto nothing happened so I launched a bija ball of yukai into the village leaving large craters and many sectors of Kanoha in ruin I charged another up by I was stopped black chains raining from the sky immobilizing I watched as the gods of old descended from the sky their eyes fell upon me and ethereal hands reached into my body and pulled my spirit out the same occurred with Naruto the black chains slithered around the spiritual form of Naruto taking a deep breath from her long story Kiyomi's eyes were beginning to tear up from what she knew the next part of the tale was once those chains had stopped my soul and body were dragged into the small form of Naruto from then on I only remember blackness except when he had entered life or death situations which were far too many for a child of his age I caught fragments of his pain and emotions when sealed within him until his death when he was 15 May knew beforehand Naruto had died but at 15 he should have barely been a gen and what happened how did he die choking back a sob she could see the execution through Naruto's eyes he was executed by the Yandame his own father Kiyomi went on to describe the method of execution the 
Namakaze employed on his own son the contract struck with the gods by the Yan name was that when Naruto died of natural causes I would die with him fortunately Namakaze broke the deal halfway through so Naruto followed me to where demons go when they have died to be rebirthed or destroyed wiping the tears from her bloodshot crimson eyes Kiyomi continued Naruto hasn't been the same since his only goal is to destroy all of Kanoha and execute his father the same way he had done to him my own. Demonic rage now flows in Naruto empowering his darker thoughts and primal instincts by the time Kiyomi's long tail had ended it was midday and both women were starving but looking at the meat that Naruto brought they suddenly could go without another meal they moved their discussion from the cave to the rock shelf at the exit of the yukai made cave Kiyomi learned a lot about Mei like how the bloodline user loved crispy shrimp rolls and she no longer wanted to become the leader of Kirimeon. Her side of the conversation learned more of the demoness like her favorite thing was the euphoric feeling she got from drinking the blood of other demons and she wished to bring Naruto back to the caring boy he once was the sun began to set behind the mountains and the thundering of massive power being unleashed slowed to a stop watching the sky intently they searched for Naruto and find the blonde demon they did as his body shot through the dissipating clouds and smashed right into the side of. The dormant volcano the deep hole punched into the mountain could easily fit a dozen people Kiyomi and Mei peered into the gouged earth and saw the burned and blackened body of Naruto the demon's wounds were healing but they could tell he had put himself through hell lifting Naruto the woman brought him up to the cave gently placing him on the cold rock floor Kiyomi began to flow her yukai through her partner the deep purple yukai flitted off their bodies as the soothing effect the combined energies made assuring that he felt no long lasting effects of his injuries Kiyomi placed his head into her lap and ran her soft fingers through his hair Mei watched Kiyomi's action that a mother or possibly lover would only do feeling the pang of loneliness Mei continued to watch in Naruto's unconscious state his mind running through his memories screaming at the nightmare of faces and events swirled around him like an uncontrollable whirlpool and he was being dragged to the bottom of it when his screaming stopped his eyes glazed over content to give up and just die to escape his agony then he felt something it started with just the soft caress that flitted across his unblemished skin then the feeling spread and deepened it flowed through him and soothed all his fears and pain the whirlpool of memories stopped and he just floated in the darkness enjoying the weightlessness this unknown feeling gave him finally after a plethora of restless nights filled with nightmares he simply cried tears of joy at finally being free from them even for only one night Naruto's joy affected his reality as well as chakra light and became soft once again the oppressing thought Kiyomi always felt from him quieted till she could feel none and largest of all a few innocent tears flow down from his eyes for the first time in many many Years Kiyomi couldn't help but smile at this Naruto return to normal if for only a little while leaning down she placed a chaste kiss upon his forehead this was the Naruto she remembered, 